Number 25. Could you please shut the door? It's drafty in here. It feels stuffy to me. What does the man mean? Number 26. Todd told me he was going to find his own apartment. But he's looked at several nice ones in his price range, and he still hasn't decided to move. What can be inferred about Todd? Number 27. Did you have any luck booking a ticket? The travel agency was closed. I'll have to go back tomorrow. What does the woman imply? Number 28. You must have eaten half a dozen pieces of pizza already. Well, I've only had a couple, actually. But I guess two's probably enough. What does the man imply? Number 29. I'm going to buy a tape of jazz music this afternoon. Not another one. What does the man imply? Number 30. Didn't I just see Elizabeth? I thought she said she'd be out of town this week. Oh, no. That was last week. What does the woman imply? This is the end of Part A. Go on to Part B. Part B. Directions. In this part, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to two friends on a hiking trip. I can't believe that we climbed Blue Mountain in only two hours. Look, you can see half of Star Lake from up here. The only thing that puts a damper on this view is the bugs. They are swarming around me. It must be those tiny little black flies. Wait, don't move. You have a beautiful butterfly on your back, an orange and black one. A butterfly? Are you sure it isn't just a moth? No, it's a butterfly. Butterflies have rounded antennae, and when they're sitting still, their wings are outspread. Moths are different. They have finely pointed antennae, and they fold their wings more tightly against their backs. When did you become such a nature watcher? Just get it off me so that I can move. The black flies are starting to bite me. Okay. Hang on just a second. I want to take a picture of this butterfly before it gets away. You know, you're lucky that it isn't a caterpillar. If it were, it could tickle slightly or even give you a rash. Though if you think about it, this butterfly once used to be a caterpillar. I remember this from grade school. Metamorphosis, right? After the caterpillar hatches from the egg, it goes through two more developments before becoming an adult, the larva and the pupa stages. That's right. In the larva stage, the caterpillar attaches itself to a branch by spinning silk from its head. In the pupa stage, it lives in a cocoon and develops into an adult butterfly like this one. Right. Pretty incredible when you think about it. But the view up here is incredible, too. Let's get going. Is the butterfly gone yet? Ah, uh, oh, yeah. There it goes. See? Number 31. 
What is this conversation mainly about? Number 32. According to the woman, what is one way in which butterflies can be distinguished from moths? Number 33. What bothers the man about black flies? Number 34. What happens to caterpillars during the pupa stage? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a telephone conversation between two students. Jones Residence, Mary speaking. Hello, Mary. This is Ted. I just called to see what you're up to. You weren't in English class today. You almost never skip class. Didn't you hear your alarm? Actually, I needed to go to a doctor's appointment. Oh, I'm sorry. What's wrong? It's not serious. They said that I have anemia. It's actually quite common among women. Isn't that a condition in which the blood is deficient in red blood cells? That's it. And it means that I have to eat more foods high in iron, like beef liver and spinach. Some cereals are iron-fortified as well. Yuck. Can't they just give you some pills? The doctor did give me iron pills to take every day, and those should help, too. They'll check my blood eight weeks from now to see how well I'm responding to the treatment. Until then, you'll have to eat lots of cold cereal? Like Cheerios? I guess so. I need to have 18 milligrams of iron a day. Even though I hate cereal, I guess I'll have to stomach it. I do hope that you feel better soon. Oh, I almost forgot. I was supposed to give you some handouts from Professor Smith. Would you like me to drop them off at your place? Thanks. I'd appreciate that. Did we have any homework? We're supposed to read Milton's Paradise Lost up to page 245 and write a short reaction to it in our journals. Okay. I'd better get going to read up. See you next class. Number 35. Why did Mary miss class? Number 36. What is wrong with Mary? Number 37. What does Mary have to do? Number 38. What did Bill almost forget to give Mary? This is the end of Part B. Go on to Part C. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to the following talk given by a pet store owner. Once you have decided...